This is the Nashville 2 Podcast with your host, Edward Fox. G'day viewers and listeners, it's Ed Fox with another great episode of Nashville 2. Your Nashville 2. Let's tell your story. And today my special guest is Vernon Sheridan, and he's the host of a podcast called The Traveling Pulpit podcast try saying that three times real fast and he's based out of the nashville metro area or middle tennessee as we like to call it i've been calling it nashville metro which i guess they do too but so i'm learning as i'm here and um the reason this podcast started was because i was learning a lot about the nashville area and there's a lot of people here that aren't getting the recognition they deserve and vernon's one of them and so he was gracious enough to come on to the podcast today and talk a little bit about what he does. G'day, Vernon. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, Edward. I appreciate being here. Hey, no worries. And you can call me Ed. You know, my mom called me Special Ed. So, you know, that works too. Okay. All right. (laughs) (laughs) So, So, Vernon, are you from this area originally? Not originally. I grew up in the Northeast area of Baltimore, Maryland. And what brought me here, I have a North Carolina background. So I have a, a Maryland raising, but North Carolina background. And then it, what brought you to Nashville? Uh, my wife. Oh, well, yeah, that, that yeah. can happen. <laughs> but <laughs> it was it was ministry, but my wife was um, part of it to help bring me here. Got it. Got it. Well, that's, that's what brought me to the States was uh, this uh, Kansas girl walked into where I was working and said I took too long waiting on her because I was flirting with a couple of New Zealand girls, Kiwis, <laughs> and that I should take her out to dinner, even if she didn't miss her appointment. So uh, we've been married 32 years. So I, I think wow. that works. So for, for those of you watching this on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, you can see I'm wearing my uh, Santa hat on top of my Aussie hat. Uh, for those of you listening on the podcast, you'll have to grab catch the show but i've also got my qualifications is my little teddy uh koala bear uh, not bears but you know that's what we call them and uh we made his own little hat as well so that's my qualifications for christmas i have all those i'm totally highly qualified vernon so feel free to talk about whatever you want i have the qualifications to back it up awesome i'm grateful for uh for the opportunity to be here i uh started the traveling pulpit uh from after my ordination. Okay. Uh, I had this ordination. I had this piece of paper, uh, both my, my parents that uh, were, were gone and I moved back home to Tennessee and I was just wondering what to do. So a friend was uh, at call. Uh, we were sitting at coffee and uh, he told me, he said, uh, you know, you have a voice for radio. And I said, well, I'm grateful you didn't say a face for radio. Right. So, he asked me about podcasting and I said, no, I never heard of that. And he said, it's internet radio. And I was bought and sold right then and there over a Starbucks coffee. Right. And I think a lot of us, a lot of us have uh, trickled into listening to podcasts. I know a lot of true crime podcasts and a bunch of different podcasts. The the secret is, yes, you got to have something to say, but number two, you got to have something that people want to listen to. Right. So, right. so that's interesting. So tell me, uh, how did you initially get started and how's it growing? I initially got started with Anchor. Um, my friend who mentioned podcasting, he's heavily into um, electronics and knowing the ins and out. And he said, I'll send you a link on how to get started. And I looked at looked at the link that he sent me. I went to YouTube and started looking at how to podcast. There were a lot of great uh, information there and I got with a platform called Anchor and I used Anchor for about a year and a half and it it began to grow uh, just through me putting myself out there people started to listen and it was a real surprise because they were interested in what I had to say and I was like wow you know this is God's word going through the airway and people are listening so uh I decided to change platforms and, and uh, here we are now. So, okay. So there's a couple of things I want to unpack there. Isn't it interesting? I remember when the internet first came out um, and, you know, 94, 95, as we start to see these different services, some of you weren't even born then. Yes, I get that. Mm -hmm. But, but with the, with the internet coming out, 
a lot of people at churches were scared about the misuse of the internet. And the fact is, there's always going to be misuse of every tool. Um, but it's also it's also got the ability to reach people that would never be reached otherwise with the the message, right? So so it's 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 sort of like money. You know, people misquote that uh, money's the root of all evil. No, no, no. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil, right? You know, I don't love money. I, you know, when I walk out of Kroger with a, a, a head of lettuce or a container of sour cream, they want to be paid. So it's yeah, not me. Do. You know, it's not me that's worried about the money. It's the people I shop at. They don't want to let me walk out for free, right? So. Right. So it's it's the same way that we use this tool called podcasting to reach people with interesting uh, information, education, the word of God, uh, or if I'm just promoting local businesses and, and having conversations with local businesses, nonprofits, that sort of stuff, which is our focus on Nashville too, uh, if we haven't already caused some people to turn off. But um, Vernon, tell me, tell me what the traveling pulpit focuses on because if you like most of us that do podcasting without a video element we can just sort of operate in our closet right you know put up a microphone do that sort of stuff and and we don't need a lot of space to record good audio uh, but when you start to get into video and you got to use green screens you know we don't want to look behind the curtain for the messy bedroom <laughs> right. but uh, you know you got to have lighting you got to have all of that when you start to do uh video Right. So t tell me about what you talk about on your podcast and the easiest way for people to find you. Okay. What I talk about on the podcast is everything that can be found in God's word. It is the truth of God's word. It's a platform set like much like Billy Graham. Billy Graham traveled throughout the entire world preaching the gospel to every person on the continent. And the traveling pulpit was designed to to do that, to reach every person on the continent speaking or uh, preaching the gospel of truth to every person throughout the world. And it's funny you mention a closet because that's where I actually am. I'm oh, in my okay. clothes closet every Saturday afternoon, and I have my my phone on, on the shelf, and I'm recording right there. Oh, and, that's awesome. And then w when do they go live? When can people download them? Um, They can download it... Uh, Saturday afternoon, just as soon as I'm finished. I start recording around 11 or 12 um, that morning towards the afternoon. And by 12 30, one o'clock, they can start listening to it live. Awesome. That is cool. And so going through God's word, and how long have you been doing this for? The traveling pulpit has been in existence since April of 2019. So we're coming up on four years in existence. That's exciting. So that's, and you're recording and you've been faithful to record mostly every week? Yes, mostly every Saturday. Uh, I go in on, uh, I go in on a Saturday, I call a Sabbath, which we know it is a Sabbath, but um, I go in and I, I, I get it done and, and I just pray that one person hears it. Right, right. Yeah, because that's, that can make the huge difference. So, so let's, for people that are interested in podcasting, because I think that's interesting too, is you, you started out on Anchor and then you moved to a different podcast hosting platform. What what made you decide to do that move? Um, switching from Anchor to a larger platform gave me the ability to reach a larger audience. I see. Okay. And Anchor was limited in its uh, its reach of audience. But where I'm, who I'm with now, I um, I um, I bought a subscription through Buzzsprout. Okay. Buzzsprout is able to reach every single uh, major platform. Sure, podcast platform. Yeah, yeah. 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 So so that that's how um, that that's how it, it goes throughout the world now. Uh, Buzzsprout gives me a, a stat sheet that lets me know where in the world a podcast is being heard and and how many times that it's being heard and it's been heard in zimbabwe uh the philippines uh nigeria japan germany and i mean it's mind blowing to see the numbers come back because that just tells me that one person throughout the entire world has heard the traveling pulpit at least once right 
And right. that's what it's all about. Just reaching that one person. Yep. And then uh, when you're not podcasting, what is it you're doing around the Nashville area? What I do around the Nashville area, uh, I work at a radio station, Bot Radio Network here in Nashville, and I help the uh, general manager here um, sell radio. And I never thought I would actually work in a radio station and podcasting at the same time. So it's like a win-win, you know, I'm around microphones all the time. So, yeah. Right. Yep. And then um, when you, so let's talk a little bit. One of the things we do on Nashville too, is we talk a little bit about different things we like to do when we're not working. Right. Mm -hmm. So when you're not working, you're not doing your podcast. Do you have hidden gems around Nashville that people, people might've lived here all their life and not know about them, or maybe they've just moved to the area or looking to move to the area. What are some things that you and your family do that you think are pretty cool in the middle Tennessee area? Um, and we're looking for three hidden gems, basically, that you uh, that you guys love doing. Okay, three hidden gems. One of the things that we like doing is we like to eat out a lot. I'm with you right there. I'm, I'm you got me. As a family, we love to eat out a lot. We have a, a older son who is away in college, and a younger daughter who is here with us. So on Fridays, we tend to try and figure out where we're going to go. Where well, there's one Mongolian restaurant um mongolian style restaurant in murfreesboro okay and it catches me off guard that i don't know the name of it but i know exactly <laughs> where it is in murfreesboro it's right there in the avenue okay I think, um, yeah, I think it's called Genghis grill i think it's called okay. Genghis grill yeah we, we we love to go there shopping is something that we like to do also i call okay, well that let's hold that for a second i'm gonna okay. ask you what's the favorite dish for you at Genghis grill Wow. It would have to be, they don't call them lo mein noodles, but they are noodles. Right. And I mix that with um, uh, chicken and broccoli and rice. Okay. There you go. And does your wife have a favorite? She does. I'm, I'm putting you on the spot now, aren't I? <laughs> it's all right. Hers is the noodles also. She copies off of me a lot. So hers is the noodles, but she does a lot of vegetables in hers. Got it. And what about your daughter? She is a big seafood lover. So hers is the shrimp and the the crab. I think it's the imposter crab that she gets on, on hers. And she does rice also, the fried rice also. Okay. So uh, speaking of seafood, I'm a big fan of seafood. I seafood and I eat it. That's, that's pretty much the way that's, it goes. Yeah, That's right. Uh, it's like I, I, uh, I like doing the seafood diet, right? I don't lose a lot of weight, but I feel really, you know, I feel really uh, accomplished having followed the diet. I see, I eat it. And then if I'm not on the seafood diet, I love the chocolate diet. I don't lose an ounce, but I feel really good doing it until I overdo it. You know, (laughs) don't overdo your diets. Okay. Um, So uh, actually I told my wife I was going to make a car out of spaghetti noodles. So that's sort Mm -hmm. of these noodles as well. And she said, uh, she said that can never happen. Boy, was she surprised when I drove past her. <laughs> there you go, folks. There it is. The first dad joke of the day. Um, maybe Ooh. not the last, but it is the first. Uh, we're not talking about quality here. Okay. So we've got the food element out of the way. Uh-huh. Um, what are we doing if we're not eating? Uh, if we're not eating, we're shopping. <laughs> okay. We're shopping. See, I'm not a big shopper. I am a hunt it down, buy it, drag it out and get home. Like my wife tricks me because we we went to the Galleria the other day over here in Franklin, Cool Springs. And she said, oh, let's just go into men's warehouse and see if we can find you a couple of dress shirts. Oh, OK. I know that's not the way it's going to stay. We're going to yep. go to uh, uh, what is it? Jo- Joe's Joseph Banks uh, yes. men's yep. store. Yep. And we're going to go to JC Penny and we're going to go to Macy's and we're going to go, you know, anywhere where there is men's shirts, we are going to be stuck going. But I did hit Candyopolis. So they had some good okay. sugar free, sugar free chocolate coconut Ooh. things that I that I got. So that's my shopping story. So let me hear your shopping story. When you guys go shopping, where do you go? Well, I have a teenage daughter. Ah. So yeah. Cool Springs Galleria is definitely the place that we target a lot. Also Opry Mills. And we also go to a lot of the beauty stores. Right. She is soon to become 
student in one of the beauty schools here in Middle Tennessee. And so she likes to go and look at the products and right. you know, sample the testers and things like that. And my wife normally ends up going to the the uh, JC Penny or you know one of the other the malls that I mean uh, stores that are in the mall. And she does a lot of shoe shopping. Right. You know, ah, I so she's, she's a, a she's yeah. A I spend a lot of time with shoes. Yes. <laughs> so Sometimes I let them go on their way. Right. And what do you do? Find the couch, find the seat, sit outside. What, what, what do you, what oh, do you know? Yeah, I, you, I have YouTube TV. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Got it. I have a mobile game that I, uh, I'm a big gamer. And so I uh, used to be PC and board game and now, now it's mobile games. So I, she lets me sit in the car. If she's doing grocery shopping and she doesn't want me, she doesn't need me to come in. I get the yeah. ability to sit in the car and she's good with that. I'm good with that. And then uh, normally mall shopping, though, I get I get dragged from store to store. Of course, you know, there used to be Sharper Image, which is where, where all the guys used to congregate in the Sharper Image store and look at all the That's cool right. gadgets that were a waste of money. But um, they have right. they have since gone on, although this in the Galleria, there's lots of cool stuff. Like I like those hanging chairs that you see that you put on your veranda. They've got a and then there was a guy there. I, I got his card. Um a cool artist. Where did I put his card? So this guy does stuff on metal and, um, and of course I have 400 business cards right in front of my <laughs> desk here and I can't put my hand on, on his, but he does these prints on metal. Uh -huh. um, and he was set up there the other night in the gallery. And of course I can't find his card, but um, maybe I'll add that to the show notes. So what we do here is we'll add this information to the show notes. So you can listen to us ramble on or you can cut straight to the show notes. And thanks for listening. No, uh, no, you need to listen because <laughs> there's more stuff coming. Okay. So we're, 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 uh, we're Cool Springs Gallery, beauty stores, that sort of stuff. Aubrey Mills is, is an amazing, I, I need to pack a lunch for that one and a backpack and normally a, a, a camping tent because I need a nap. It's so big. Like it's just goes on forever. Uh, but it is a gorgeous place uh, to go. Although I would prefer not to. That's, that's, that's <laughs> you know I, I don't like shopping i like buying like you know hey i can sit here what's the old thing with the yellow pages let your fingers do the walking let your fingers do the walking yeah yeah, yeah. now i can do amazon and and you know i love the fact that oh look, look at that. i can just play with the pom -pom. Dangling, yeah. <laughs> i'm glad i don't have any cats otherwise they'd be playing with the pom-pom on my hat while i'm on the you know it's it's funny my cat back uh at our place in kansas he only climbed on the keyboard whenever i was trying to use it yeah. And I'm not really a cat person. I'm a dog person. But this particular cat, when I would walk around the 15 acres I had, the cat would follow me, right? So he was more wow. of a cat dog than just a cat. But exactly. the cat did like the keyboard when I was on it. He would just have a field day with this pom pom on my Santa hat. Okay. <laughs> so we're, we're eating in, in Murfreesboro, which is a great area of middle Tennessee and a suburb of Nashville. We're shopping at Cool Springs and, and Opera, uh, opera mills what else are you doing what, what are you doing when you're not shopping and you're not eating studying the word of god okay well as a hidden gem that you know is a hidden gem but a hidden gem specific to nashville do you have a third one we can knock out that you oh. like to do uh when you're not eating and you're not shopping see my idea of walking through the mills uh, walking through opry mills is sort of like walking a hiking trail right yeah, yeah. and occasionally you stop and you get a piece of chocolate from one of the kiosks in the center that that's that's my you can't really do that walking out of, on around percy priest or out in the hiking trails but what else do you do are you are you a biker a golfer or well we like to walk okay we're, we're we 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 are walkers we walk our neighborhood and there are a couple subdivisions in our in our our subdivision and we walk over into those subdivisions we live near a park so of course we walk over into the park and you know right. We'll we'll walk and talk, you know. We'll end up doing you know five six miles with no problem, just just walking and talking together. Yeah, know? I think I think about doing workouts and stuff like that, and then I lay down till the feeling passes, you know. But <laughs> <laughs> so I think there there are a lot of great trails. Like Murfreesboro has a great you can walk or bike all the way through basically Murfreesboro. Um, I had a guest on that was talking about that one time, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, so, okay. So do you have a favorite verse from the Bible you'd like to share with us? Romans 10, 9. Okay. 
Refresh confess my memory. With, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Com, yeah, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you will be saved. It it just comes down to that, doesn't it? It does. One of my favorites is, and I've been I've been showing sharing this with my wife whenever she picks on me about uh, doing another business. Is uh, I think it's Ecclesiastes eleven two. It says, uh, "If you have seven ventures, have eight, uh, because you never know when disaster will strike." Right? We don't we don't know, and that's I think that's a paraphrase. That's Edward's paraphrase of <laughs> NIV. Um, but but the 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 funny thing is, she says yes, but the it, the Bible doesn't say. If you have 15, have 16. <laughs> Same point. It's what it's trying to get across. Like, can you have too many businesses? Well, yes, you can't focus on too many businesses. I said, well, it's like Dollar Tree. You just go buy Dollar Tree and spin the plates. And sometimes you have to take the plate off the pole, pole and sit it aside. And sometimes you'll get back to that plate. But so Ecclesiastes 11.2 has been uh, helping me solidify my position at wanting to buy another business. So we uh, we just bought uh, 40% of a barbecue restaurant up in Goodlettsville that I like to eat wow. at all the time. Okay. Like, great guy. He, he he feeds the homeless with, uh, he, he's got a passion for that. He's got a passion for God and and he's got good skills on the grill. So uh, <laughs> that's a, good, a must. Good, yeah, he's good pit master. So I, I was going there and eating and finally I said, look, dude, like, hey, uh, I'd love to work with you. You need some help with your marketing. What can we do? I keep trying to get him on the podcast, but he, he doesn't stand still long enough to get on the podcast. Uh, he keeps, keeps trying to do it from his phone. I'm like, come on, Timothy, <laughs> sit at your laptop, like take a break. I don't care whether it's midnight on a Saturday night. Just take a break and let's let's record an episode. So, but I have to take you there sometime. We're moving into a um, a Wendy's across from Rivergate Mall that was uh, that was closed down, and so we're rehabbing yeah. that. I remember that Wendy's. Yeah, we're going to move into that early next year. It's got lots of parking and and got good traffic, so that'll be fun. Um, what else? What else would you like our listeners and our viewers to know about you and know about the podcast? Um. Well. To know about me is just I am a God-fearing, country-loving, family man that is like everyone else. The Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and I, I am that I'm that I'm that same person that's uh, wanting that relationship that Christ wants to have with us. The podcast I I talk about that. Every week, I try to fit it in there somewhere, somehow. And every week, it gets in there that we all need this relationship. And and I, I, I love people. I love people. I could not do what I do if I did not have genuine love for people mm -hmm. to see them uh, at their best. Because this world wants to see us at our worst. Right. And I tend to find that people live up to the expectations you set. And if you expect people to be basically good, I think you get that result. I mean, we all know negative friends that think bad of everybody and they tend to get that result too. You know, you can always find the negative in everybody. I'm writing a book. It's called Be Authentic Unless You're a Serial Killer. Then don't be that change. <laughs> Because, right. because we can all be jerks at times, right? Yeah, you know, can. um, we are pretty quick to give ourselves grace, but pretty slow to give other people grace. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think, you know, next time you get cut off in traffic, think about all the people that you've cut off in traffic, right? You know, we're quick. Oh, 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 I, I made a mistake. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, you forgive yourself, but you don't forgive the guy that cuts you off because mm -hmm. he does the same things that you were doing, right? You know, he's not paying attention or he, you know, Google tells him at the last minute, take a right hand turn. And he's in the left hand lane. You know, that's mm -hmm. happened to me. And before you think about it, you're like, oh, oh, crap, I shouldn't have done that. You know, but <laughs> so so we've got to be able to forgive others like we try to forgive ourselves straight away. You know, let's let's have some of that grace for other people, too, I think. That's right. That's right. So uh, so people can find you on all your major platforms as the traveling pulpit. Yes. And and there's. How many episodes would you say you've got done so far? I am up to, I think, 209 so far. Okay. So that's like four years at 50 weeks a year. If yeah. you take a couple of weeks off. Yeah, that's pretty good. I also have a website, 
I'm looking for a webmaster. So I just want to throw it out there. If someone sure. is willing to uh, work with me, uh, I don't have a budget and I don't ask for money. I do the podcast for free. But if someone is willing to want to, you know, get in and help me with the uh, with the website, I would greatly love the uh, the help because I do have a website. It's travelingpulpitministries.com. Okay. TravelingPulpitMinistries.com. So we're going to have all that in the show notes, folks, and you can reach out to Vernon. He, I'm sure he'd love to talk to you. And uh, look for that episode uh, or that podcast on all your major platforms, just like us. Thanks for being on the show, Vernon. Thank you for having me, Edward. Ed, Ed, special Ed. <laughs> special Ed, Edward, no worries. And I'll leave you with a Christmas joke. What did one snowman say to the other? Do you smell carrots? <laughs> I like that one. I like, okay, we're going to stop the recording. Thanks folks for listening. Check us out and make sure you subscribe to Nashville 2 and to Vernon's podcast, The Traveling Pulpit. This is the Nashville 2 podcast with your host, Edward Fox.